Well, so hello everybody. So, uh, in this particular lecture series, we are going to discuss the experimental techniques first for identification of flow regimes and then we discuss a little about the influence of different operating parameters on the distribution of the two phases, primarily those parameters which influence flow in micro channels, but not so very pronounced effect in macro channels. And after that, we will go about the experimental um, estimation of void fraction, what are the challenges involved, experimental estimation of pressure drop and what are the challenges involved. And then after that, we go for the modeling part. Now, as far as flow regimes are concerned, we find that uh, normally for micro, sorry, no, normally for macro systems, we find that there are several different ways of sensing flow regimes. Out of these different ways, the most means the most uh, reliable I should say or the oldest technique whatever you say are the visualization techniques which are based on visual and photographic techniques. Other than that, a very common way to detect the distribution of the flow patterns as well as estimation of void fraction is to exploit any particular physical property which is different for the two phases. This particular physical property can be a difference in the electrical impedance of the two phases, it can be a difference in electrical conductivity or a difference in the capacitance of the two phases. For air water system, conductivity probes are widely used in macro systems and they have gotten large number of advantages as well, which we shall be seeing shortly. It can happen that the two phases, they have widely different optical properties, say a difference in refractive index or a difference in absorption coefficient. This difference in absorption coefficient is a very common property which is exploited particularly for liquid liquid systems, where intrusive conductivity or capacitance probes cannot be used very freely. And uh, other than that, we can use any other physical property which is different for the two phases. It can be a difference in the attenuation of gamma ray, x ray, neutron. It can be an ultrasonic probe which measures the difference in the, uh, in the amount of absorption of ultrasonic waves and so on and so forth. Additionally, we can also um, measure the fluctuations in pressure, temperature, flow rate, etcetera also. The basic principle being that, that we try to find the distribution of the two phases by exploiting any particular physical property which is different for the two. So, suppose we have record some particular signal which records the variation of any particular property of the system which is widely different for the two phases, then from the continuous signal we would get an idea about the distribution of the two phases and from the average value we should get an idea regarding the in situ composition of the two phases and this is usually done. In fact, the most widely used technique as I have told you, the visual and photographic methods, they actually, they actually operate on the difference in the transparency or the optical property of the two phases and this is the method which is most widely used. Okay. Now, for macro systems we find that a large number of techniques as I have already mentioned related to pressure fluctuations, fluctuations in extra absorption, impedance, wall shear stress probes etcetera can be used, but we find from a survey of the past literature that for reduced dimensions most of these techniques they do not work. The primary reason being that most of the techniques are intrusive in nature and when they are intrusive in nature, for macro systems it does not matter much because the flow passage possibly will be quite large compared to the physical dimension of the probe which we are going to use. But to make probes of much smaller dimension as compared to the dimension of a micro channel is definitely difficult. <coughs> So, as a result we find that the most widely used technique in reduced dimension is visualization and photographic techniques. Firstly, it is non intrusive and the other thing is um, 
behavior. Firstly, it is non-intrusive and secondly, it, it can just measure the variation of voids very easily. And uh, thirdly, with the recent uh, advancement of uh, your electronics and very high quality camera coupled up with quite sophisticated image processing techniques, now photographic techniques have become quite popular for micro scale systems. Well, apart from that I also wanted to mention one more thing regarding the other techniques say pressure fluctuation or impedance probe etcetera. There are two ways, one is we can just look at the raw signal and we can try to understand a, a distribution of the voids. The other thing is to perform some sort of post processing of the random signals, maybe a statistical analysis of the signals and then from the from the curves obtained from the statistical analysis, we would be in a better position to understand the flow distribution. Now, usually the techniques which are applied are probability density function, power spectrum density function and so on and so forth. All of these have been used with different levels of success for macro systems, but for micro systems to the best of my knowledge power spectrum and probability density function have been used, the others have not been used much. In fact, apart from visualization as I have already mentioned other techniques also have not been used. Now, for this visualization if you are using definitely whenever we use any particular technique there will be some problems and therefore, those problems have to be either minimized or they have to be alleviated. Now, as far as visualization technique is concerned, the first problem is that just by seeing from with the naked eye or by seeing through me by means of a camera lens, it is very difficult to deduce the flow patterns, because there is a large amount of subjectivity involved in estimation of flow patterns. And particularly when we are dealing with such small dimensions, it is really very difficult even if you have a very powerful microscope to understand the distribution of the phases. And we also have to remember what most of the past researchers have reported that there are large number of flow patterns occurring over the entire cross section. Possibly that explains that when slug flow or plug flow occurs, people sometimes report only liquid flow, only gas flow, liquid plug flow and liquid ring flow and so on and so forth. Possibly because it is very difficult to identify the cross uh, the flow distribution over the entire section. And most of the things we try to judge based on our particular qualitative analysis. For example, suppose we see the over a particular time frame only ga continuous gas core is moving and the liquid is as a film. Possibly we will be recording for say about 30 seconds, 40 seconds and we classify it as annular flow. Someone who would be more careful and will be recording for say 1 minute might see some particular bridging of the or necking of the continuous gas core and that person would identify this particular pattern as either slug annular or maybe slug ring uh, that uh, slug ring flow etcetera. So, therefore, it all depends on the subjectivity or the, the uh, accuracy with which or the rather the uh, tenacity with which the experiments have been performed. This is number one, this is particularly quite serious in case of micro channels, especially when we know that large number of flow patterns can exist at the same time and usually we record the probability of existence of the different patterns in order to construct the flow pattern map. The other thing is usually we find in photography a large amount of information is produced and it is very difficult to analyze and interpret the information. And more importantly we find that usually the interfacial structures are quite complex and in a micro channel the interfacial structures will be of comparable magnitude to the channel dimension and therefore, they give rise to multiple reflection refraction and this often obscures the view of the central region of the channel. Possibly we can get an idea regarding the distribution 
of the outer periphery of the channel and it is very difficult to actually know what is happening in the inside of the channel. The other thing we have to remember is that for all particular two phase flow systems the transition is a gradual process. It does not happen abruptly at one under one particular flow conditions. So, therefore, quite naturally it is very difficult to pinpoint the regime boundaries. And of course, we all know that it is definitely much more difficult for high mass flux, high and low quality systems that is obvious. And the most obvious thing which we all know that if we really have to use these particular techniques, the visualization and photographic techniques, naturally the test section has to be transparent, which may not always be possible. In case the test section is not transparent, then we need to install transparent windows at intervals to enable visualization of the flow phenomenon occurring inside the pipe. Now, some of these can be alleviated. For example, a very serious objection is this multiple reflection refraction. This is particularly true for the case of circular mini or micro channels. Now, for this we can often do one thing, we can often use a view box. A view box is simply a rectangular or a square box which is installed in the, uh, in the section which you want to view and this particular box is usually filled up with some particular material which has the same refractive index as the refractive index of the tube material, refractive index same as tube material. So, what this often does is it minimizes the refraction reflection which occurs at the tube substance and therefore, it possibly gives us a better representation of the flow inside. The other thing which we should be remembering is that it is not sufficient to have a very high end camera for visualization studies. The associated lighting is equally important in this particular case and very frequently we find that our success in, in determining the flow distribution depends more on the lighting than on the camera. So, therefore, the lighting system is quite important and uh, we have tried a few lighting systems just to see or rather it is not only the lighting system, it is the relative placement of the camera light etcetera. It is also depends upon the background that we are providing and in literature you will not find much information regarding these things. These are basically done by trial and error method and so therefore, it depends upon the fineness and the aesthetic sense of the observer or the experimenter. Some particular lighting arrangements that we have shown which might be helpful in capturing the cross sectional average distribution of the voids are shown here where we have that the camera mounted on the top and the light from the side. But of course, the, we all know that these things are much uh, easily said than done that is true. Well, there is one more thing also to capture the cross section. We can have a, we can generate a laser sheet as shown in this particular slide and this particular laser sheet it enables, it illuminates the cross section and gives us an idea regarding the cross section distribution. Now, as I was telling it is very important to have uh, the, uh, the lighting arrangements and very frequently particularly if we are very interested or if we have to do image processing, it is very important that the lighting is properly done and the view box is placed. Now, here I have put up one particular arrangement which has been tried in the multiphase flow laboratory for studying liquid liquid flows through a 2 millimeter diameter conduit. As you can see what we have done, we have we have put a, a view box which is transparent at the back and the front and the other other uh, edges are covered by an opaque cover. And we have an illumination system which is of the same dimension as the view window that we want to see and th this has an back lighting arrangement. So, that it, uh, it uh, illuminates the test section from the back and the camera is positioned in the front. <clears throat> now, just taking photographs and observing from there is definitely one particular way 
of understanding the flow distribution. But more important than this is the image processing technique. So, therefore, a sorry. So, therefore, it is along with, with recording the signals or sorry recording the images, a proper image analysis is necessary keeping in view that the flow pattern is predominantly <coughs> slug in this particular case. Now, I have just given a representative example of the different uh, steps which are involved in image analysis. We can use different softwares, but more or less the same type of steps will be involved. Quite naturally, we have an image. Naturally, what we have to do? First, we have to uh, load the image in RGB format and then we have to convert all the image into the grayscale mode. Once we convert it into grayscale mode, it enhances the contrast of the images. And once the contrast enhancement is done, we also do one more thing for enhancing the contrast. If we can subtract the background image from the continuous flow image. And definitely, just like all devices, a filter should be involved to, re to remove or to reduce the image noise and after that definitely there should be some sort of calibration with the help of which we would be able to determine the individual slug parameters namely the slug length, the slug frequency and the slug velocity. So, therefore, it is not only important visualization techniques, it is not only important that you have a very good camera, it is equally important that you have a very good arrangement regarding the associated optics, the lighting arrangement and you also have a very good software for processing of the different images. <coughs> now, from this it is it is quite obvious that well uh, although th this particular technique the uh, uh, visualization technique or the photographic technique is widely used, but as we have seen that it has got its own set of problems although they have been minimized to some extent with the advancement of technology, but people have always been searching for more objective methods of identifying flow patterns. Now, as I have already mentioned, there are really a large number of objective techniques in macro systems, but most of them being intrusive cannot be used for micro systems. One of the non-intrusive techniques which can be used is based on the absorption and attenuation as well as scattering of light or any other type of radiation, where the, the absorption or the attenuation coefficient is different for the two phases. Now, one such device has been developed in the multiphase flow laboratory of IIT Kharagpur. It is an optical probe technique. We have used it for mini and macro systems and in literature there are researchers who have used an identical technique for micro systems as well. Now, let us see how it works. It is a very simple system. What does it have? It has got a laser source at one end this is the setup which is there in our lab and this it has also been patented. So, we have a source here and we have a detector just on the opposite side. The source it is a, it, it is a more or less a narrow source or rather it is a pointed source which sends a point average or rather which sends a small amount of light through the a laser beam through the test section and there is a photodiode sensor at the top. This photodiode sensor when it receives light, it converts it into a voltage signal and then this voltage signal is sent to a processing circuit for further processing and data acquisition and then it gives us a continuous voltage time signal on the computer screen by means of which we can understand the flow distribution. Now, the some of the salient features of the probe which explains its versatility or popularity is firstly it is non intrusive, secondly the, the detection of the flow regime it does not depend upon the physical properties like corrosiveness of the fluid. 
so that it can be used for any toxic hazardous or any sort of fluid not only that it does not disturb the flow passage more importantly it, it it is not affected by the corrosiveness of the fluid and there is very there is no fluid loss by sticking to the probe etc the way it works is it works on the basis of attenuation and absorption okay or in it works on the basis of attenuation and scattering of light what it does is that when light is passing depending upon the composition of the two phase medium light is light it is um, absorbed by the medium if the medium has a higher proportion of more absorbing uh, substance then naturally it will be absorbed more if it has a large, larger proportion of lower absorbing substance then it is absorbed less along with that depending upon the presence of bubble droplets interfaces etc the uh, the light it may be scattered as well so therefore it has a two two way purpose firstly it it detects the flow distribution not only by rather it it detects the distribution by scattering of light it also gives us a an idea regarding the average proportion of the two phases based on the average signal which depends upon the attenuation of light more important it gives an instantaneous response and due to the monochromatic and coherence character of the light a better penetration through the fluids is achieved and well the total system is easy to handle and uh, it is small the component components associated are available and they are inexpensive it gives us an accurate estimation of the caudal average phase distribution and uh, apart from your flow distribution it can also give us a large number of uh, other para measurement of a large number of other parameters for example bubble swarm velocity the disturbances at the interface when the interface disturbances are more naturally at that time we get a more wavy signal when the interface is smooth we get a much more smooth signal as expected now in this particular slide we will be it's very uh, we will be seeing how it gives us the an idea regarding the distribution of the two phases in a macro system what if we observe here what do we find we find that for a stratified system say what do we have we have one particular signal at a more or less high velocity high voltage right so what does it show since it this uh, these signals they were recorded with kerosene and water so therefore kerosene absorbs light more than water so therefore the signal will be higher when greater amount of light is transmitted or in other words when there is a greater proportion of water in the test passage so therefore with observing the the mean of the signal we find that more or less a greater proportion of water is associated and we find that if we if we take a time averaged histogram of this signal which is nothing but the probability density function and rather it's the pdf of this signal i'll be just touching upon a little more details of the pdf after a short while so if we take a time averaged histogram of the distribution of the voids then what do we see it has a very less spread which shows that more or less water is present in a larger proportion but the interface between the two is more or less smooth on the contrary if we go to the mixed or the three layer flow pattern if you remember that we had discussed for liquid liquid flows then we find that the signal is much more wavy just from the visual appearance of the signal it is not very evident but if we take up the time averaged histogram of the distribution of the two phases we instantly we can understand the difference between the two and we observe that in this case the signal is much more spread out although the mean is not very different now as we go to st maybe stay still higher water velocity and we get a completely dispersed flow pattern we find that the spread has reduced and the uh, while the mean value is not very different 
when the mean value is not very different we know that predominantly water is the continuous phase and from the spread we can understand whether the interface is smooth or whether it is wavy. It is quite natural that with the presence of droplets or bubbles or a very wavy interface the spread will become larger. So, just from the visual appearance of the probability density functions we can know that the these two they refer to a dispersed distribution while this refers to a, a separated flow pattern. Now, if we compare the two or rather if we compare dispersed oil in water and water in oil. See just by visual appearance it would be very difficult to differentiate the two. Okay. Even by looking at the two signals immediately the first thing which strikes us is the difference in the mean value. So, that itself tells that if water was the continuous phase here, oil will be the continuous phase here number 1 and if you compare the spreads you find that the spreads are not very different which suggests that both of them refer to dispersed pattern with water continuous here and oil continuous here. Now, this particular uh, uh, thing or uh, this particular device was also adopted and it has been used with quite a good amount of success in uh, literature and we will be discussing about this in our next lecture. Thank you very much.